You're the God of wonders. Praise the Lord. Thank you for joining us for the God of Wonders radio program. Tonight, a brand new series entitled Waiting Upon the Lord, Part 1 with Pradeep Stephen. Please listen. Isaiah 40, verse 31, and it reads this way, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. We must condition ourselves to listen to the Lord's voice because every decision, everything we go through in life, if we fail in this, then we will get into much unnecessary burden, which will turn into worry and disaster. And then we have to retrace our steps and then try to recover the losses. But it's a big unnecessary burden. And at some points, it can be spiritually fatal. So it's very important to take this to heart, that waiting upon the Lord is a critical characteristic of a believer that follows the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to wait upon the Lord. But what does this mean? What does waiting upon the Lord mean? We know what the word wait means. It means to stand by. It means to be patient. It means to watch, look for something. That's what wait means. To stand by, to stay still, and with it, watch, look for, etc. But waiting upon the Lord is not just standing by and looking, but there's more to it than that. It also means that we are actively engaging in the impossible through the Word and the promise of God through the power of God. Whatever is coming against us, whatever is impossible, whatever looks hopeless, whatever looks uncertain, whatever looks like we cannot get in our own strength, when we wait upon the Lord, the whole heaven opens up. The creature that the Lord used here to liken to our waiting is the eagle. And parallel to the eagle's experience is the Christian's experience. And there are three things that we can say about the eagle that parallels the believer's experience in waiting upon the Lord. And the Lord used the eagle for a very specific purpose. But three things we can draw from the Word of God is when we wait upon the Lord, there is a transcendence. There is a transcendence. There is a rising above. There is a going beyond. Beyond the material limits beyond the usual limits. We go beyond to another realm altogether. And the eagle does that. The eagle flies higher than any other bird. It flies higher than any other creature, naturally. And it seems, as it glides for hours up in the sky, that it is in a world of its own. Transcending time and space, far above the mountains, in some cases, it is there, flying at an altitude where it is completely beyond the usual experience of other birds or other creatures. And it glides there gracefully for hours sometimes at a time. And so we also, when we wait upon the Lord, we are going beyond our own experience, our own ability, our own foresight, everything that we know, the best strengths that we have, we are surpassing that, we're going beyond that, because we find that we cannot do many things, only God can do. So we shut ourselves in, and when we're in with the Lord, waiting on Him, then we transcend our own material experience. There, the Lord can do wonderful things. As you know, everything that is physical, everything that is material, everything that you see, has a spiritual origin. Everything that we see has a spiritual origin. And there are spiritual forces at work all the time. And as you heard in the worship, faith is a spiritual force. It's something that happens and is immaterial to the natural realm, but it is a spiritual substance of that which we need. So it's something that is definite and it is substantial, but it's in a spiritual domain. So in the spiritual domain, when we wait on the Lord, 
certain things happen. We transcend the normal experience. We're going beyond ourselves. There are many people in many religions that they try to invoke the gods or the presence of that which is above themselves or outside of the experience by many incantations. They chant. They do all kinds of things. Sometimes they work themselves in a frenzy, like the worshippers of Baal, when they cut themselves, thinking that that would please the gods. People do many things, but God says, all we need to do is wait upon Him. The second thing that happens is, we get transformed. Just like the ego, we get transformed. What do we mean? The ego goes through a process called molting. And in the molting process, what happens is, the eagle actually begins to lose its feathers. It begins to rub off the talons, the sharp claws, on the rocks. And it begins to actually break its own beak. So that all of these things are useless. And the eagle becomes, in effect, completely weak. Completely vulnerable to any attack. What happens is, the ego actually goes through a period of renewal. But to the observer that is worldly and carnal, even some scientists, they believe that the ego gets depressed during that time. But not knowing the Lord and the Lord's ways, how He created the ego, they fail to give glory to God. And so they minimize their renewal stage. The molting process of the ego, as it waits in private, and it happens in private, and that's the reason why scientists don't have much knowledge about that, because it is in private that the ego goes through the molting process. So in private, we wait upon the Lord, and we go through a process of dying. When we wait on the Lord, we're saying in effect, Lord, you take over, and I'm looking to you, not to myself. I'm looking to you for the breakthrough. I'm looking to you for the liberation and deliverance. I'm looking to you for the blessing that I need. Now some people wait on the Lord specifically so that they can get transformed. Other people, they wait on the Lord for some deliverance, for some other blessing. Both are fine, but no one thing. Those who wait upon the Lord will definitely be transformed. They will go through a transcendence to another realm in the supernatural, where under God's wings they will trust. In the secret place, like Psalm 91 says, they're waiting on the Lord in the secret place where God is. And God begins to work behind the scenes. Now it may be long, it may be dark, they may see no material sign, but the Lord's promise is enough. And the Lord says, they that wait upon Him shall renew their strength. They'll mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. When the eagle mounts up the wings, it begins to soar. It's far above every other creature. And it's there in that special place that only it can occupy. The believer who waits on the Lord far transcends the normal experience. The eagle goes through that process of renewal. But first, there's the plucking of the feathers. There's the breaking of that beak. There's a rubbing off of the talons. Completely useless, it seems. It seems to be dead. No function, functionality. But that's where the Lord has programmed a renewing where it regrows the talons, regrows the beak, regrows the feathers with a renewed vigor and a complete uh, revitalized youth. That's a fact. So that eagle that looks like it's over, its story is over, when it is going through that waiting period on its Creator, now that's built in nature by the Creator. But the parallel is for us, we're waiting on the Lord, we're saying, Lord, I'm not going to try this on my own. What I need to do, what I need from you, Lord, I'm not going to try to do it on my own. I know that I am weak, but you are strong. When I wait on the Lord and I depend upon Him and I pray to Him and I'm waiting patiently, that's when God sees that He can begin to renew me. Because in and of myself, I cannot do what God wants me to do. In and of myself, I cannot obtain the supernatural blessings. So God revitalizes all my vigor 
just like the eagle goes through that revitalization. So when I wait on the Lord, like the eagle, I will renew my strength. Once that eagle renews the strength, all new equipment, as it were, it is actually sharper and stronger than before. Praise the Lord. And that's what the Lord will do for those who wait upon Him. So many things are happening when we wait upon the Lord. But as we look into the scriptures, we trust the Lord, we do what He says, then we will benefit with all of those things. But if we take it casually and we think waiting upon God is just praying and then looking at the clock to see when my blessing will come, we have completely missed what waiting upon the Lord means. It's a period when I am shutting myself in with the Lord, with close communion, with a childlike trust, trusting the Lord in the dark because of His promise to me that He will never leave me nor forsake me and a thousand other promises for healing, for deliverance, for victory, for every good thing comes from the Lord. But the Lord wants to train us to depend upon Him and to become like Him and He'll renew our strength in the process. The third thing that happens is, of course, we triumph. When we transcend the human material experience by being alone with God, and that could mean sitting like David before the Lord, kneeling before Him, looking at Him with our spiritual eyes and saying, Lord, I gaze upon your beauty. Who is like unto you? Lord, if you are like this, then what is there that you cannot do for me? If you are the Creator and we just worship Him and we commit that thing into His hands that we need. As I said, it could be, it could very well be spiritual transformation. We might say to the Lord, Lord, I want to be more committed to you. I'm waiting on you for that. Lord, I want to be more zealous for you. Lord, I don't want to have a, a, a weakened faith. I want to exercise my faith and I'm trusting you to help it grow as I do my part. But I'm depending upon you. That's what waiting on the Lord means. Depending upon Him. Like the ego, almost being oblivious to time and space. We don't regard time. We don't regard the material properties. Like Abraham. He didn't regard the time period chronologically that he was beyond the age of bearing. The ego transcends beyond the usual altitude and experience. The Christian who believes in God and waits upon Him transcends and mounts up with wings like eagles high above his problems, high above all of his limitations because he's trusting in God with whom all things are possible. So we triumph also in the end because like the ego once the vigor is renewed the youth is revitalized it's able to see sharper fly higher and look down and see the prey and with the renewed vigor get the prey for us when we are seated in the heavenly places with christ jesus as we're waiting upon him in the spiritual realm we're praying we're trusting we're not looking to ourselves. We're not looking at the things that are blocking the vision. We're looking straight at the Lord. And like David, we're sitting there before Him. We're waiting upon Him. We will get the answer from God. We will obtain the prize. We'll obtain the deliverance. But it takes for us to know God is doing something in us also. Amen. It is not only I'm doing this so I can get this from God, some blessing. But through the process, God is helping me to die to myself. He is changing me. Please write us, contact at elbim.org for the email, and on the web, www.elbim.org, or write us via regular mail, El Bethel International Ministries, Post Office Box 966, Goshen, New York, 10924. And until next time, may the Lord richly bless you. Glory be to God. Thank you for joining us for part two of the series Waiting Upon the Lord. May the Lord bless you as you listen. When we transcend the human material experience by being alone with God, and that could mean sitting like David before the Lord, kneeling before Him, looking at Him with our spiritual eyes and saying, Lord, 
I gaze upon your beauty. Who is like unto you? Lord, if you are like this, then what is there that you cannot do for me? If you are the Creator and we just worship Him and we commit that thing into His hands that we need. As I said, it could be, it could very well be spiritual transformation. We might say to the Lord, Lord, I want to be more committed to you. I'm waiting on you for that. Lord, I want to be more zealous for you. Lord, I don't want to have a, a, a weakened faith. I want to exercise my faith and I'm trusting you to help it grow as I do my part. But I'm depending upon you. That's what waiting on the Lord means. Depending upon Him. Like the ego, almost being oblivious to time and space. We don't regard time. We don't regard the material properties. Like Abraham, he didn't regard the time period chronologically that he was beyond the age of bearing. The ego transcends beyond the usual altitude and experience. The Christian who believes in God and waits upon Him transcends and mounts up with wings like eagles high above his problems, high above all of his limitations because he's trusting in God with whom all things are possible. So we triumph also in the end because like the ego, once the vigor is renewed, the youth is revitalized, it's able to see sharper, fly higher and look down and see the prey and with the renewed vigor get the prey. For us when we are seated in the heavenly places with Christ Jesus as we're waiting upon Him in the spiritual realm we're praying, we're trusting, we're not looking to ourselves, we're not looking at the things that are blocking the vision, we're looking straight at the Lord and like David we're sitting there before Him, we're waiting upon Him we will get the answer from God. We will obtain the prize, we'll obtain the deliverance, but it takes for us to know God is doing something in us also. Amen. It is not only I'm doing this so I can get this from God, some blessing, but through the process, God is helping me to die to myself. He is changing me. It's only when I die to myself that the renewal takes place, that God gives the new victory, the new talents, everything that only He can give in His presence. So like the ego, when I triumph, then I will know that waiting on the Lord is something that has brought me to the state that I'm in now. It's only waiting upon the Lord. And so it is an existence that is saying to God and to the world, I believe God. I believe Him. Regardless of what people may say, what my flesh may feel, what the world may declare, I believe God and that's it. And even if like Abraham it took 25 years for the promise to come, he held on strong in faith. We too, when we wait upon the Lord like that, the promise will come. That which is in the supernatural realm, it's going to come and materialize in the physical realm where I am in the body. Job said something like that. He said, in my flesh I will see God with these eyes. And Job will see the Redeemer because he believed, even though it's the oldest book in the Bible, some say, the story of Job. Nonetheless, even though uh, some uh, over three millennia have passed, still we know because he trusted in the Lord, he waited on God, and he still believes He's going to see the Lord Jesus on the earth when He comes back. So everything that we hold and commit to the Lord and we hold God responsible for our blessing and we say, Lord, I'm coming near you to trust in you, God will perform it. They that wait upon the Lord shall mount up with wings as eagles. The believer is going to begin to soar. Because he's shut in the secret place, God is imparting spiritual renewal all the time. It's not a period of dead activity. There's a spiritual activity going on. On the person's part and also on God's part. On the person's part, they are actually actively trusting in the Lord. They're trusting in God and they're saying to God, Lord, you are worthy to be trusted. And they're saying, God, my strength 
is no means to obtain this blessing. I can't do it. This is impossible in the human realm. And God comes through. Or it may be something that we don't know how it's going to play out. It's something that is uh, normal. It may be that you're looking for a job. It may be that you're looking for a, a spouse. It may be that you're looking for your education. You're looking for a lot of things. Deliverance from a disease. You're committing it to God. And what you're doing is, for your part, you are faithfully seeking God. Which means pouring over the scriptures. Putting full weight into the word of God. As you heard in the worship, using the faith that you have because you do have faith. Every person has the measure of faith. You use that. That's what it means to wait on God. While I say, Father, I need this, and I'm depending upon you, I'm doing this. I'm praying. I'm reading the Word of God. And I'm believing, Lord, you're going to come through. And I'm also knowing in my heart, as I'm waiting, God is changing me. There are more changes to be done in me until I see Jesus face to face. Amen? Even the Apostle Paul needed to be renewed day by day. But he waited upon the Lord. He trusted God. His life was over to the Lord. He trusted in the Lord. Everything that God wanted for him to be, he said yes to the Lord. And the Lord was faithful to the Apostle Paul. He'll be faithful to you. God says He will what? Renew the strength. He will cause us to mount up with wings as eagles. We'll go above and transcend the problem or the limitation or the challenge. We're waiting in secret under His wings we're trusting. He's going to make sure we're going to soar. We're going to get stronger in faith. More hope is going to shine through. And we're going to be victorious. We will triumph. This is what God does when we wait upon Him. Going back to the verse, it says, They shall run and not be weary, they shall walk and not faint. Four things here. If you wait on the Lord, what does that mean? Sitting at his, in His presence, praying to Him, worshiping Him, setting aside time for the Lord. Specifically, Lord, I'm going to shut everything off. It's more than just a casual devotional time. It's actually believing God, coming to Him, worshiping Him, and being glad in Him that He will do it. He will change me and He will give the blessing. So the four things are mounting up with wings as eagles. That is renewing the strength. Mounting up with wings as eagles. Running and not being weary. Walking and not growing faint. Like the eagle that the Lord used in this verse on purpose. The Holy Spirit used that. Like the eagle renews its vitality at that stage when the feathers fall off and all those things happen. So we renew our strength. Like the youth, the eagle gets the strength restored in midlife to the youthfulness, to the strength it had when it was a youth. And it becomes sharper like before and stronger. That happens for the believer who sits at the feet of the Lord, who trusts in the Lord and believes the Lord. They also mount up they're going past their limitation to see what normally we can't see. God gives us vision from a vantage point of the heavenlies. We literally get strengthened in our spirit so that we get transcended above the problems. Only then can we see. God can't get us to see until we make a decision to wait upon Him. But He says, if you do wait upon Me, I will show you that you can mount up with wings of eagles. Thirdly, He says, you will run and not be weary. And then fourthly, you will walk and not faint. The things that you need to run for, exerting great effort, the Lord says, when you reach your limitation, humanly, I will take you beyond the limitation. Beyond the material existence. I'm going to go and take you beyond what you are capable of. That's supernatural. Then it says, they will walk and not faint. Why did he include that? The running is a big challenge. 
It takes great effort. It's a sudden burst of energy. It's a big thing. But then there's the endurance. They will walk and not faint. You can keep walking. You can keep walking. Step by step. Run the race. Walk the walk. Running the race is a, a bigger picture of the, that thrust. That I'm going to go and do the great things for God. But can I pray daily, consistently? Can I fight the good fight of faith every time I get attacked from the enemy? Can I hold the intercessory prayer for someone without failing? That's walking and not fainting. Continuing. Enduring. So in one verse, in one picture of the eagle, the Lord says, They that wait upon me, like the eagle, they will renew their strength. They will, they will mount up with wings as eagles. They will run and not be weary, and they will walk, and they won't faint. The question is, tonight, as we close, do you wait on the Lord? Are you waiting on the Lord for something today, tonight? Or are you not waiting on the Lord? Are you taking your Christian experience casually, sort of taking it as it comes. I read a little, I pray a little, but I don't gather my self together and say, I will choose a set time to wait upon the Lord Jehovah who has promised that as I do, trusting in Him for transformation, I will be transformed. For some blessing, I will transcend. He's going to develop me and make me to sit with Him and to know what that means. Rising above my problems tonight. And the Lord is going to cause me, finally, to triumph. I will obtain the prize. I will obtain the blessing. I will not be defeated because the Lord is with me. I waited upon the Lord. It says in many instances in the Bible, those that wait upon the Lord, they won't be put to shame. When they look to the Lord, their faces will be radiant. God says, all of my blessings, all of my victory is yours if you wait upon me. I will invigorate you and I will establish you. I will fortify you and I will give you the victory. All of this for us. Do you wait upon the Lord? If you don't have a habit of waiting upon the Lord, if you still trust yourself, your intellect, your physical stamina, your ability, your achievements, then wait upon the Lord and not upon yourself. Waiting on the Master, it says in the Psalms, are those who look unto Him for the reward. We not only look unto the Lord out of obedience to please Him, but also for the reward. As a servant to the Master, a servant waits upon the Lord. Blessed is the servant that waits on his Master, on the Lord. When we're waiting upon Him, we are looking to see what He's doing. While we are dying to ourselves. They're saying, Lord, you know, I don't know. You can, even if I can. With you, all things are possible. My impossibility becomes God's possibility. Or as someone said, man's extremity is God's opportunity. With God, all things are possible. Please write us, contact at elbim.org for the email. And on the web, www.elbim.org. Or write us via regular mail. El Bethel International Ministries, Post Office Box 966, Goshen, New York, 10924. And until next time, may the Lord richly bless you. You're the God of wonder. Praise the Lord and thank you for joining us for part three and the conclusion of the message, Waiting Upon the Lord. May the Lord strengthen you and encourage you in the final part of this series as you learn to trust Him for all of your needs and soar high like an eagle in the heavens for His glory. Let's listen. God gives us vision from a vantage point of the heavenlies. We literally get strengthened in our spirit so that we get transcended above the problems. Only then can we see. God can't get us to see until we make a decision to wait upon Him. But he says, if you do wait upon me, I will show you that you can mount up with wings of eagles. Thirdly, 
He says, you will run and not be weary. And then fourthly, you will walk and not faint. The things that you need to run for, exerting great effort, the Lord says, when you reach your limitation, humanly, I will take you beyond the limitation, beyond the material existence. I'm going to go and take you beyond what you are capable of. That's supernatural. Then it says, they will walk and not faint. Why did he include that? The running is a big challenge. It takes great effort. It's a sudden burst of energy. It's a big thing. But then there's the endurance. They will walk and not faint. You can keep walking. You can keep walking. Step by step. Run the race. Walk the walk. Running the race is a, a bigger picture of the, that thrust. That I'm going to go and do the great things for God. But can I pray daily, consistently? Can I fight the good fight of faith every time I get attacked from the enemy? Can I hold the intercessory prayer for someone without failing? That's walking and not fainting. Continuing. Enduring. So in one verse, in one picture of the eagle, the Lord says, They that wait upon me, like the eagle, they will renew their strength. They will, they will mount up with wings as eagles. They will run and not be weary, and they will walk and they won't faint. The question is tonight, as we close, do you wait on the Lord? Are you waiting on the Lord for something today, tonight? Or are you not waiting on the Lord? Are you taking your Christian experience casually, sort of taking it as it comes. I read a little, I pray a little, but I don't gather myself together and say, I will choose a set time to wait upon the Lord Jehovah who has promised that as I do, trusting in Him for transformation, I will be transformed. For some blessing, I will transcend. He's going to develop me and make me to sit with Him and to know what that means. Rising above my problems tonight. And the Lord is going to cause me, finally, to triumph. I will obtain the prize. I will obtain the blessing. I will not be defeated because the Lord is with me. I waited upon the Lord. It says in many instances in the Bible, those that wait upon the Lord, they won't be put to shame. When they look to the Lord, their faces will be radiant. God says, all of my blessing. All of my victory is yours if you wait upon me. I will invigorate you and I will establish you. I will fortify you and I will give you the victory. All of this for us. Do you wait upon the Lord? If you don't have a habit of waiting upon the Lord, if you still trust yourself, your intellect, your physical stamina, your ability, your achievements, then wait upon the Lord and not upon yourself. Waiting on the Master, it says in the Psalms, are those who look unto Him for the reward. We not only look unto the Lord out of obedience to please Him, but also for the reward. As a servant to the Master, a servant waits upon the Lord. Blessed is the servant that waits on his Master, on the Lord. When we're waiting upon Him, we are looking to see what He's doing. While we are dying to ourselves. They're saying, Lord, you know, I don't know. You can, even if I can. With you, all things are possible. My impossibility becomes God's possibility. Or as someone said, man's extremity is God's opportunity. With God, all things are possible. Do you wait upon the Lord? If you don't have a habit of waiting upon the Lord, if you still trust yourself, your intellect, your physical stamina, your ability, your achievements, then wait upon the Lord and not upon yourself. Waiting on the Master, it says in the Psalms, are those who look unto Him for the reward. Amen. We not only look unto the Lord out of obedience to please Him, but also for the reward. As a servant to the Master, a servant waits upon the Lord. Blessed is the servant 
that waits on his master, on the Lord. When we're waiting upon him, we are looking to see what he's doing. While we are dying to ourselves, we're saying, Lord, you know, I don't know. You can, even if I can. With you, all things are possible. My impossibility becomes God's possibility. And, or as someone said, man's extremity is God's opportunity. With God, all things are possible. So if you wait on the Lord, God will do this. But do you wait on the Lord? And do you do it consistently? Someone says, I don't have anything to wait on the Lord for. The greatest thing is to go to the Lord to ask Him, Lord, transform me. As I said, no matter what we wait on the Lord for, we will be transformed when we're waiting correctly. We're waiting in faith, believing. But you can go to Him if you don't know anything to wait upon Him for. If there's no deliverance from demonic possession or deliverance from some sickness that you can think of, if there's no waiting on the Lord for a better job, or waiting on the Lord for a, a believing spouse, waiting on the Lord for um, other things in, in your walk with Him, in ministry, certain things that look impossible, or look challenging that you can't face. If you're not looking to the Lord for those things, at the very basic level. You can say, Lord, I need to begin to wait upon you so that you can change me. Make me more like Jesus. And you pray to the Lord every day like that. And then the Lord will help you to rise above. The dreary, monotonous, boring, pseudo-Christian life. There have been people who call themselves Christians who have charged this Christian way of being boring and monotonous and so on. The reason is, that's a false Christian experience. They're not paying attention to the scriptures at all. They're not doing anything about what God said to do. But when we listen to the Lord and we wait upon Him, we'll begin to be revitalized. We'll have the energy, we'll have the worship experience, everything will come into play. The Lord will do that for us. So let's start, if we haven't, to wait upon Him. Set aside time to seek the Lord, to worship Him, and to trust Him. And to know that as you wait in His presence, like King David, He will allow you to see Him more clearly. Gaze upon His beauty, and in the process, like looking in the mirror, we will be transformed. God will do that. As we close our eyes, Let's say to the Lord, Lord, I want to be like that creature you described, that majestic creature, that even that majestic creature goes through a dying process, but only to be revitalized. Lord, I need to be dead to me so that Christ can live through me. Christ can be seen more and more. So let's look to the Lord in prayer. And I trust that the Lord has helped you to get a greater insight into what waiting upon Him means. We all need to wait upon the Lord. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank You. Thank You, Lord, for this marvelous scripture that You've given, Lord. That they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray, help us, Lord, to take this word to heart. Help us to Lord, truly ask if I'm waiting upon the Lord or I'm waiting upon the clock. Jesus, help us not to wait upon this material physical existence. Help us not to look at the calendar, Lord, and trust the calendar. Help us not to trust destiny or fate, Lord, apart from you. Lord, help us to have that surrender that the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. He will take care of me. I'm looking to Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to keep that which you have committed unto him against that day. One day, Lord, you'll cause us to come forth like the eagle, Lord, goes through the dying process in secret as it's waiting. So we, we die to ourselves in secret as we wait upon the Lord. And in full view of the universe, Lord, you'll cause us to come forth triumphant like the Lord Jesus, for we shall see him as he is. Thank you, Lord. Father, I pray, Lord, that you would help each one of us, Lord, 
to take the things that we have carried as a burden, that we have looked to man for help, we have looked to our own strength, how much strength we have, how much gas we have in our car, rather than looking upon you. Lord, help us, Lord, to take everything in stride according to your spiritual instructions, that we may have a prosperous life, go through this journey. Lord, whatever darkness there is, whatever valley there is, we will be transcending above it and through it to the heights with Jesus, in the light with Jesus. Hallelujah, that no problem will stand against us and succeed. Lord, that we'll be transformed during the process of waiting on the Lord, believing the Lord for deliverance, for victory, for transformation. Lord, and that we will triumph because God said it so. Hallelujah, because you said we'll triumph. Because Jesus is triumphant. All his followers will be triumphant. Glory be to God. Thank you, Father, Lord. Everything, Lord, that the people listening, the people that will listen, for myself included, that we have committed unto you as we wait upon you. Bring it to pass, O oh Father, for your glory, in Jesus' name. Amen. As your journey goes Through life's trials The load you bear on earth Gets harder Cast your cares and he will direct your ways. They that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They will run and not go weary, they will walk. Has failed, the feet gets weaker, every weary feet would surely stumble. Just walk with him, and we shall renew your strength. As you walk with him, you'll be stronger. As an eagle flies, you'll soar higher. Just trust in him, and he, and shall, he shall renew your strength. Your Please write us contact at elbim.org for the email, and on the web www.elbim.org, or write us via regular mail, El Bethel International Ministries, Post Office Box 966. Goshen, New York, 10924. And until next time, may the Lord richly bless you.